Here, this is the first time I've been here. All I've heard is uh, vegan this and vegan that and don't eat animals. And, and, and the real thing is, why? Why should we be vegan and why should we not eat what we've always eaten? Animals, cows, pigs. The truth is, this is the question that I had when 16 years ago I developed cancer, I had heart disease, and I was like 70 pounds heavier than I am now. And I was a paramedic for Dade County. I was in the medical field. I went to see a urologist. I went to see my doctor. He's telling me all the wonderful things he was going to do to me. You know, radioactive implants, surgery, maybe some chemo. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hang on there. I'm not doing any of that. I'd rather go home and die. This is what I told my doctor. Before I let you emasculate me, surgically remove body parts, I'd rather go home and die. He got very mad at me. He was yelling at me, do you want to die? And I said, no, but I don't want you to kill me. <laughs> My daughter does a lot of research. And she researched Hippocrates, raw food, and she said, Dad, Dad, I got the answer. All you've got to do is go raw, and you'll heal your cancer. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how is eating a salad going to cure this? When this guy wants to attack it like a nuclear war, you know, all the stuff he's going to do to me is like kill, kill, attack, cut out, destroy. And she's saying, eat raw food. Well, the truth of it is, if you understand how the human body functions, it will all make sense to you. Has anybody heard of Otto Warburg? Pathologist, German pathologist, 1931, he got a Nobel Prize. Why? Because he proved that cancer cannot grow in an alkaline environment. No, no. It cannot grow in an alkaline environment. Acids is where it grows. Anaerobic is where it grows. When there's no oxygen, it's acidic. Alkaline which I have a uh, man here with a PhD that understands acid and alkaline, is anything below a pH of seven, anything above a pH of seven is alkaline, anything below is acidic. Now, this is the key and the answer to everybody's health here. Disease in general cannot grow in an alkaline environment. I'm living proof of it. Because when I listen to my daughter and I stop eating meat, I stopped eating all cooked food. I went raw. Within two years, I had no more heart disease, no more cancer, and I had lost 70 pounds. Okay? But the real question is, how do you go alkaline? If you're going to cure all diseases by being alkaline, how do you do it? What, is that, what does alkaline mean and why does it work? Well, the truth of it is, we are an alkaline machine. If you look at us like a machine, like a car, we are supposed to be an alkaline machine. We have what's called intracellular voltage flowing in our body. Everything in our body works through electricity. Our heartbeat, the brain communicates with all the cells. Did you guys know that every one of your cells, you have 70 trillion approximately, has an acidic nucleus? And the surrounding fluids are alkaline, they're supposed to be, and they are because if they weren't, you'd all be dead. But, like I was explaining to you earlier, the difference of potential, which is basically voltage, is between a plus and a negative. The plus being the center of your, of your, uh, you know, your, your cells, the nucleus, and the minus being the surrounding fluids. When you guys are eating acid foods, cooked foods, dairy, animal products, processed foods, what happens to that negative? It gets closer towards the positive and you have less voltage. Have you ever driven a car with a bad battery? A battery should be somewhere around 12, 12 and a half volts. The new ones will give you 14 volts when you crank it up, okay? As that battery wears out, your car still runs down the road, but maybe your lights aren't so bright, maybe it takes a long time to start, and it's kind of puttering down the road. That's people on an acid environment. Okay, you guys have the pick, you, know, you understand so far what I'm trying to get to? Now you're on raw food, you're an alkaline, you're putting alkaline food inside of your body and you're, the, the difference of potential gets greater. Now all of a sudden you're on 14 volts, not 11 volts. So what do you think is happening to the human body? 
it's more efficient, there's a higher intracellular voltage, and everything seems to be working a lot better. Has anybody heard of Dr. Semi? Yeah. Okay, this is another pathologist, except this one wasn't from Germany, this one was from uh, Honduras. This is a man that, that claimed to be curing herpes, uh, AIDS, cancer. He said he was curing all these things. So what happened to him when he was here in the U.S.? They arrested him. They took him to court for practicing medicine without a license. But this man was very smart. The people that he was healing through alkalinity, raw food, and herbs, they had all been to regular doctors and they all had documentation of their diseases. The people that had AIDS had all this documentation that they had AIDS. And then he went and healed them through the herbs and the raw food, and they no longer had AIDS. So he, they went back and got retested, and now they had documentation that they no longer had AIDS. So when he was in court, the judge said to him, we have nine counts against you. Bring us nine people that you say you've cured, and I'll consider it. This is what the judge says. Guess what he does? He brings 77 people to court, all documented proof that they no longer had the diseases, the cancer, the AIDS. The judge let him go. He went free. He continued to be an herbalist. Excuse me? It was a Supreme Court. Yeah, it was a Supreme Court. It's amazing what he did, but now remember what he had done. He had pissed off the medical establishment. They still wanted to get him. And eventually they did. He ended up in a prison in Honduras, and there, there's, you know, there's probably speculation that the medical people in this country had a lot to do with it. While he's in prison, he no longer has access to his herbs, no longer has access to raw food, he's eating prison food, he gets pneumonia, and he dies. And that's how they got rid of him. And there's been a lot of cases where people that are against, I hope nobody around here is against <laughs> I'll tell people what I'm talking about, not the medical establishment. They are against anything that will heal people and they won't make money on. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be the, the ongoing problem here. They hate people like me. I have not been to a doctor in 11 years. I healed myself from cancer and heart disease without any of their help. I've been in this restaurant 10 years and in 10 years, I've had so many people come by with all kinds of diseases and problems. I can, I can give you examples. Let me give you an example of Ron, the pool builder. Ron, the pool builder, comes to see me maybe five or six years ago, and he says, I'm a diabetic. I've never seen the guy before in my life. He just comes in and we were talking. Somehow he says, I'm a diabetic, and I inject insulin in my stomach twice a day, and I hate it, and I have to do this for the rest of my life. I said, well, look, you really don't have to. There's a guy named Gabriel Cousins in Arizona. He made a movie, he, he wrote a book. It's called Simply Raw Curing Diabetes in 30 Days. And I explained to him my experience with raw food and how it worked. I talked to him for maybe 20 minutes, and he leaves, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, he left. Something clicked in his brain, and he decided, I'm gonna do this. I hate this injection in my, in my stomach, and I'm gonna try it. Five weeks later, he walks in through the door, and he starts hugging me. And I don't recognize him. He's lost 30 pounds, and even if he hadn't, I probably wouldn't have recognized him anyway. And he says, remember me? We had this conversation, blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, the diabetes. Yeah. I'm no longer on insulin. I haven't had an insulin shot in three weeks, and my blood sugar is normal. Now, remember, this is five years ago. He is still on raw food. He still has no more insulin demand on his body. And he says he was playing golf recently with about five doctors. And during the golf, you know, the golf game, he says, you know what, I used to be a diabetic, but I'm not a diabetic anymore. And they smirked at him, they laughed. And one of the doctors said to him, what do you eat? He goes, oh, I'm, I'm vegan, I'm plant-based, I'm raw. And the doctor said, that's why you don't need insulin. Try eating real food. This is, this is what the medical people's mentality is. Think about that. That is a sick thing to tell somebody, especially when you're no longer a diabetic, because what happens eventually to diabetes, people with diabetics, they lose body parts. They have their extremities amputated. 
because there's no circulation there anymore. Now I get, have you guys heard of Dr. Roseanne Calabrese? Yes. Dr. Roseanne Calabrese, she's an acupuncturist. She runs Partners in Healings. In 2011, she comes into the Greenway. And she used to be a Bay County firefighter too. But now she's an acupuncturist and she looked like she was gonna die. She looked horrible. I said, Roseanne, what's wrong with you? And she goes, I have Graves disease. I've been to six experts. They're all telling me that I have to have my thyroid surgically removed and I hate doing it because I'm gonna be on hormones the rest of my life. And again, what do I tell her? I said, Roseanne, you know I was had cancer, I had heart disease, I went raw. Why don't you try it? I gave her the name of my doctor, Robert Morse, he's an herbalist in Fort Charlotte, Florida. And by the way, Robert Morse's um, motto is there's no such thing as an incurable disease, only incurable people. <laughs> and it's true. If you think about it, if you know what you should do, and you're not proactive, and you don't take that first step and do it, you're not gonna get healed. If you'd rather go see a doctor to give you a magic pill that's gonna cure whatever you have, you're in trouble because it's not gonna cure you. It's just gonna make things worse. Well anyway, Roseanne decides, you know what, what do I have to lose? I'm gonna go see Robert Morse. Robert Morse looks at her paperwork, looks at her eyes, her radiology, see this. This guy, when you walk into his office, he's looking at you as you walk through the door, he's already figured out what's wrong with you. He says, you know what? Take these herbs, go raw, in three months, you'll be fine. And she's thinking, this guy's crazy. I've been to six experts and they're all telling me, I gotta get my thyroid taken out. She doesn't. She takes his herbs, she goes raw. Three months later, she goes to Weston, uh, uh, the, uh, the clinic in Weston, and the doctor examines her and the thyroid is normal. And he's going, I've never seen this. Your thyroid was beyond repair. What did you do? I mean, what, what's going on here? She explains to him the herbs and the raw and all he says, I asked her, I said, what did he say? Is he gonna change his practice? He goes, no, he just stood there went, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's still, you know, he's still practicing medicine the way he's always done it. He's still removing women's thyroids because that's how he makes his money. Roseanne, on the other hand, changed her whole practice. She now puts everybody on raw food. She recommends the herbs. She's doing an incredible job. She wrote a book. The book is called Cure, C-U-R-E. If you read page 14, she talks about what I just told you about the time she came to the Greenland and talked to me and how it changed her whole life. So it's just a matter of why raw works is because you put your body in an alkaline environment, just like War, Dr. Warburg said, and like Dr. Semi said, and it works. I'm living proof of it. I'm still alive. The doctor that told me I was going to die probably died already. <laughs> but, it, but it does work. But you have to believe it, like some of the people that I've talked to, you have to practice it, and it works. And, and it's just amazing. And I love what you said. You know, she's a raw Buddhist, and look at her, she's amazing. And, and this works, this works. You actually get stronger. I call it the gorilla diet, because gorillas don't eat meat, and this is a 450 pound animal of pure solid muscle. They're amazing. Have you guys ever wondered why animals in the wild don't get some of the diseases we get, and why there's no obesity in the wild? Have you guys noticed that when you see these documentaries and film about Africa and, and animals running around? They're all perfect. You know why? They're eating raw food. Everything they eat is raw. And according to the species, lions eat raw meat. Wolves eat raw meat. Gorillas, elephants, water buffaloes, they eat plants. There's no obesity in the wild. It's all muscle. Where does protein, which is one of the big things that I keep hearing from people, is where am I going to get my protein? Where does protein originate from? The origin of protein. Plants. Amino acids in plants. That's where protein originates. All of the animals that people eat don't eat meat. They're eating the, the animal's muscle that he got from you know, the cows, the pigs. They got it from eating plants. At least that's the way it's supposed to be. Now they're feeding cows, dead cows, 
mad cow disease. They're feeding them corn, which is not part of their, their diet. They're getting other diseases, and we're getting their diseases because we're eating what we should not be eating. It's biblical. I don't know how many people here still read the Bible, but if you were to read Genesis 129, supposedly Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. Everything's perfect. Everything's wonderful. God says this is your food. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Cornell University does a study. Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Well, four years into the study, he turned his whole family vegan. What does he say we should eat? Fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. After he studied it. It's, it's so obvious. And the way you'll know it is if you do it, if you try it, you're going to notice changes almost immediately in your body. I noticed it the first two weeks after I went, you know, I started eating like this. I noticed changes. Things were starting to work a little bit. There's different aspects of it. There's detoxing. There's getting rid of a lot of the buildup of the mucus that's inside of our bodies. And people go through different stages. But basically, you're on your way. You're on the right track if you start eating plant-based. And, you know, I've, I've said it in a nutshell, most of what I was going to say. So if anybody has any questions or any comments. Ma'am? Hi. Um, I choose, I try to go mainly raw, but there's a couple things like uh, collard greens and, you know, kale that is so, like, hard to chew and um, get down there and digest. Just, do you think that's really bad to lightly steam it? Lightly steaming is not horrible, but it's not the, the best. But here's the thing. You know what gorillas do? They chew their food until it liquefies in their mouth. And if you were to chew, like we have kale salads at my restaurant. We put, you know, lemon juice on it. We put olive oil. Uh, we put garlic. We put salt. We put uh, some seasonings on it. And we massage it and massage it. And it gets really soft and it's still warm. Do you know that if your food does not rot, let, let me tell you this, your body can't use it. If your food will not spoil, your body cannot break it down and assimilate the nutrients out of it. You know those foods that you can put on the table like a Hostess Twinkie or a McDonald's burger and it can sit there for five years and it still looks the same? Your body cannot break that down and utilize the nutrients. It can't metabolize it. It can't get rid of the waste. It just kind of sticks in your body and it... It causes havoc in the human body. So are you saying like so you're better off soaking something like you, that? You're better off soaking it and when you put it in your mouth, you chew it. You use your teeth and you break it down and chew it and chew it and chew it. If you try swallowing it without chewing it, guess what happens? It comes out the other end just like it went into this end. Because it doesn't break down. You have to chew your food. That's another biggie that a lot of people don't do. Yeah? Yeah. So There's a lot of different ways. Kale and smoothie, that's what we do. We put it in the smoothie. Yeah, but I mean, what did people do a long time ago before blenders came yeah. in? They chewed it. <laughs> they chewed it. They, they lost their teeth, maybe. No. No. Do you know that the best um, juicer are your teeth? You know Ann Wigmore, the wheatgrass lady? She didn't have a wheatgrass juicer. She was chewing wheatgrass, she spit out the pulp, but she sucked all the juice out of the wheatgrass. That is, number one, the best juicer you have are your teeth. And if there's certain things that don't digest, maybe you're not eating them correctly. That's, that's, that's something that you have to think of. You have to understand how the human body works, ma'am. to be put into the ground so that it becomes a plant with hundreds of seeds. 
Same thing with sunflower seeds. Think of a walnut. What, is, what happens to a walnut? It goes into the ground, becomes a tree. You have to put things in water. All nuts and seeds have to be put in water before you eat them. Why? Because there's a chemical in them that's called an enzyme inhibitor, which keeps it dormant. It keeps it from sprouting. Water activates, it neutralizes that chemical and it activates the sprouting process. It germinates. Now you've got superfood. Sunflower seed sprouts, uh, buckwheat. All these things, when you eat them as sprouts, they are superfoods. All that energy, they're alive and all that energy goes into your body and just, 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 it's like a nuclear explosion, but it's all good. What I've been eating a lot of, and I've been doing this for years, is half of what I eat are sprouts. I eat sprouts by the handful. And I eat it with a lot of salads. And it's just the most amazing feeling. You have more energy than you know what to do with it. Because sprouts are superfoods. And that's one of the things that Ryan Clemens, uh, act, you know, he, he preaches at Hippocrates that 50% of what you eat should be sprouted. And if you ever get a chance to eat at Hippocrates, it's a buffet when you first go in. He's got about a dozen different sprouts, which is the first thing that you see at that table, which is they want you to eat that first. And they do heal people at, at Hippocrates because I've witnessed it, I've seen it. I've seen people go in there that look like they were going to die and come out of there like a different human being. And sometimes it's not what you put in the body, it's what you eliminated from the body that cures you, that heals you. So that's why a lot of different things work. Why vegan? Because you're no longer putting carcasses, dead animals in your body that putrefy in your intestinal tract before they come out. Everything you eat should have liquid and cellulose, fiber. That's what we were meant to be. We were meant to eat things with liquid and fiber. Think of a celery, an apple, a carrot. What do they all have in common? They all have fiber and they all have liquid. What happens when you eat pasta? which is a whole other topic about gluten. It's, it's, it's like you can fill up a hole in the wall with that stuff, with white rice. Think about it. Now gluten, that's another subject. How many people here eat gluten? What does Mayo Clinic say about gluten? What does Dr. David Perlmutter say? Dr. David, no human being on earth should be eating gluten. 2% of us have celiac disease. Those are the lucky ones. Because when they eat it, they get a reaction. And they don't eat it because they don't like that reaction. But do you know that the Mayo Clinic says that 100% of all human beings on earth that eat gluten end up with neurological damage? It destroys your neurons, it destroy, destroys your nervous system. We should not be eating gluten. Besides, it's cooked. We should be eating raw, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, you guys don't have to believe me, but I know, of course, I know you believe me. There's so many aspects of this, it's almost like a learning experience, you're always learning. I've been doing this 16 years and every day I learn something new, from people that come and talk to me, from things I read, from things I hear, and it all makes sense. It all means that we're just a machine, right? And we just don't, we don't have the, end, the, the owner's manual. But it makes sense because we're eating the way we're supposed to eat and, it's, and the body's reacting, the body, when you cut yourself, you have to think about that cut. You're going to form a scab and it's going to heal. The same thing's happening inside. You have to stop sabotaging your body and you have to start giving it the right nutrients. That's it in a nutshell. And it has to be alkaline because that's what we are. Sandra? That I did what? I don't get sick. I, I just don't get sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. It's a matter of taste, and some people don't like the way collard greens taste. I happen to like the way they taste, and, and it's just that, you know, everything isn't the same for everybody. That's why we're all a little bit different. But we all have the same machine. We're all, let's say we're all Ferraris and we all need high octane fuel and clean filters and special oils. We can run 200 miles an hour. That's all of us. But when we put the wrong fuel in that Ferrari, it sputters down the road. When we have a, a weak battery, we're just barely making it. You've got a half a million dollar car that's not running. That's what we are.
We're amazing machines. We can detox. We can we can just do the brain. The brain. Nobody even understands ninety percent of the brain what it can do. That's who we are. We're sabotaging ourselves because we're not proactive and we're not doing what, what Robert Moore says. We're incurable people because we have all these excuses and we don't make that further step. I mean, I know people that smoke, that have a million excuses, they won't quit smoking and they know it's killing them. I know a lady right now, and I'm not gonna mention any names, but she's somebody that works with me, who they just told her that she's gonna, she needs $20,000 worth of dental work because she smokes. Do you think she's gonna stop smoking? She's gonna save the 20,000, she's saving up the $20,000 to get the dental work done, but she's not gonna stop smoking because she likes it. That's it, that's her excuse, I like smoking. Yeah? What happened? Uh oh. And you smoke, okay. Now, this is, this is a choice. She chooses to smoke, and she knows it's going to hurt you, but why can't you stop? I like it. That's what this lady says. 77, and you know what? Oh, well. It's true. It's a choice, and we all have the, the right to make these choices. But what I'm promoting is when I was presented with the choice of either going medical or dying, I chose I want to live, but I don't want to just live puttering around. I want to be the healthiest I can be. Yeah. You alkalize your body very simply. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily for the day. It does it for that moment. What happens if two hours later you're eating acid foods? That's why raw, that's another reason that raw food 
is so amazing because you're getting the whole inside thing. Did you have your hand up? Yeah. Uh, with the gluing thing, how do you explain uh, Olympic athletes that you glue after glue and like pancakes? Yeah. Then, then just like huge sex pancakes are perfect. That's a really good question. And I thought of it too. Now, most of these athletes are young. There's no old ones there. Look at me. I was at the fire department. You know what I used to eat when I was 25 years old? An entire chicken every night. I used to call it the high protein diet. I used to stick it in the oven because I didn't want to fry it and I ate a chicken. I was climbing ropes. I was running marathons. I was doing amazing things. I was 25 years old. I still had my full enzyme bank. It doesn't start, it doesn't start depleting until you're around 27 according to Edward Howell. Had I kept doing that, I would have been like a lot of these weightlifters that I knew, that as they got older and they were eating all this meat and chicken because that's all they ate and they looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they started having issues with their lymphatic system. I know one guy whose arms were so stiff, and this guy was competing with Mr. Florida that he could bend his arms. He would go to the doctors and they would give him antibiotics and he could move his arms again. And then a few months later, they got stiff again because I didn't understand it at the time but the, the diet he was on was killing him. And it's true, athletes can eat pancakes and they eat bread. And, and when I was running you know, long distances, they used to tell me that I had to you know, charge up with carbs and I used to do it and I could still run. But it wasn't the best thing. There was an, there was an Olympic athlete, I forget his name, who won five gold medals the year he went plant-based vegan and stopped eating all that garbage. And when you see him in the Olympics, He's 50 feet ahead of everybody else. He's a really big, muscular guy that just supercharged. So it's not the best thing for you. Yes, you can do that, you can eat that stuff, but it's not gonna help you in the long run. It's gonna catch up with you. The way my problem caught up with me when I was in my early 50s. And I ended up with cancer. So it does catch up with you. But you're young, so you could probably still eat a lot of the stuff that if a lot of us ate, it would affect us right away but it will catch up with you. That's the problem. Yeah? Hi, I'm Jane. Jane? Yeah. Um, I just have two questions. The first is, um, my friend 